So look, uh, maybe Callie. Brother Callie, come up here and give a testimony for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Good morning. Boy, the worship team that really get me going. <laughs> Start getting singing. I like that. Yes. Praise God. Okay, so yesterday was a blessing for me. I never thought that I'd be on the outside looking in. Because uh, in the late 80s, I did a bunch of time in San Quentin prison, and the Lord released me. He gave me a second chance. Hallelujah. So for me to be in, in a prison yesterday and to be sharing the gospel of God and to get to know people and stuff like that was just a real, real blessing for me. Amen. Amen. So when I woke up this morning, the first thing, because you know what? I'm a sinner. And I'm, I'm not going to try. I did enough crying in the prayer room. I don't feel like crying out here. <laughs> But uh, I'm a sinner, and I'm, I'm working on myself, you know what I'm saying? And I'm working on being a better Christian. But when I was with them guys yesterday, I had a connection with them. Probably because of my past and what I went through, I had a connection with these guys, and it was it was amazing. And I hope that uh, that the Lord fills me with to do something like this so I can, I can continue to do it. Amen. But when I woke up first thing this morning, if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Psalms 51. It's a restoration, a renewal of myself. Hallelujah. And it says, uh, be gracious to me, God, according to your faithful love. According to your abundant compassion, blot out, blot out my rebellion, wash away my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Yes. For I am conscious of my rebellion. Yes. I'm conscious of my rebellion. And my sin is always before me. Against you, you alone I have sinned. Yes. And done this evil in your sight, so you are right. When you pass sentence, you are blameless when you judge. Indeed, I was guilty when I was born. I was sinful when my mother conceived me. Surely you desire integrity. In the inner self. And you teach me wisdom deep within. Purify me with hyssop. And I will be clean, wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Yes. So, it's a blessing to be at this church. Pastor Matt was on fire. He's the only one that got up there and did what he did. And he made people, the Holy Spirit was just flowing through the whole situation. And the Holy Spirit was flowing through him. And he had attention of everybody out there. It was amazing. That's what I have. Thank you all. Amen. Yesterday was absolutely amazing. Uh, it was an honor. I just want to say it was an absolute honor to serve God. Uh, just like me and him, we and Wade. How I was, I was hoping you would be there. But uh, looking from another angle, you know, being on the outside, being looking in, and these guys letting in. We went to one of the dorms, and I'm telling you, when you walk through the door, one because a lot of it was open, but when you walked into a dorm, it was just like dark. And it was just, it was just heartbreaking. A lot of them were just dead asleep, sleeping the day away. And we were starting to wonder, I was like, man, I hope this changed because if they're all sleeping, I know I'm not about to go shake nobody up and try to tell them about Jesus. But once we, start, once we started talking to some people and things started, time started going by, I was very surprised how open these men were. I was surprised that they were willing to, they were hungry. Let me say that they were absolutely hungry to hear they were thankful that people showed up. And, uh, you know, I learned a few things. The, the other volunteers, they came from different denominations, different churches. And a long time ago, that probably would have, I'd be honest, it probably would have made me just kind of wonder. That's just that criticalness that I had. Where it came from, I don't know, but I'm glad it's gone. Amen. But when we worked together with these men, I, I noticed that they all wanted to do the work of God. We were all there serving the Lord, and we all had one thing in common. And I honestly, the thought while I was there did not cross my mind. Like, man, is he a is he a this or where does he go to church or where you know what what kind of doctrine he follows? They were all saying Jesus, and that's what it was all about for me. Uh, 
you know, the Lord started to show me a lot of different things in my own life through these type of situations. I pray every every man and woman in this place would go out and do the call. We're all called. You're not. I'm not special. None of us that went are special. We just happen to be obedient to that specific call. And I pray that all of us would get get our hearts where they need to be with the Lord. I'm not saying they're not, but I'm just saying we all should be doing stuff like that. And I'm just, I'm praying that every seed that was so, no, it was one of those guys, a few of them, they kept saying, pray for me, I'm about to get out, I'm about to get out these walls, and I was thinking, there's a wall that you don't see that you need to get out of first, yes. Yes. it's that wall that's separating you from your father, yes. and as I prayed, I, I made sure that I prayed that way, and it was, I'm telling you, it was, and towards the end, after we started to worship, we did the worship, and after that, we went and prayed. I'm telling you, all of us was praying with, I mean, countless men. I, it was like, it was like we're praying here, and then went to the next, then went to the next, and then went to the next. And these men were touched. I, I happened to go to the same person twice on accident, didn't realize it, but, man, it was just, it was moving. The spirit was just moving. Those people were hungry, and uh, I'd like to just say a prayer for those guys, for what we did, because... It ain't about us. It's about the work of God. And, and I just want to make sure that what we did was not in vain. Because I know, like he said, the enemy is on the move. Those guys had to wake up in the same place this morning. And one of them said, man, can you take my place for the weekend? I said, sure, for the weekend. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just want to pray for the work that was done. Most Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for pouring out your mercy and your grace upon us. God, I know that you love us, Lord God. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your call. God, we do need to hearken to your words. There's areas of our lives, Lord God, that we really do, do need to surrender. So, Father, I just pray for each individual person in this place, outside of this place, who's watching, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that the seed that was planted in their heart would begin to flourish. I pray, Lord God, that the rain would continue to go and do the work, Lord God. I pray there wouldn't be an umbrella over this sea, Lord God. Let that water seep in and do the work, Lord. I know that you have called us, Lord God. Things are starting to get amazing. If they weren't already, it's getting a lot more intense. And Father, I know that you're bringing us to do the work. We are in the book of Acts. In my heart, Lord God, this is time to stand up and serve God. And Father, I want to pray for every seed that was planted in the hearts of these young men. Lord, I watched men, Lord God, shed tears. Tears, Lord God. They were broken hearted, Lord God. And it's a, it's a sad thing to leave them, Lord God, but we left them with the one thing that they need the most, their Father and their Savior. And Father, I just pray that you would nourish them, that regardless of their circumstances, that you are right there ministering to them, protecting them, protecting that seed that was planted in their hearts, Lord God. I pray that those men would go out and do the work in that place, Lord, to those who are leaders, to those who are already doing Bible studies, I pray that you would give them fire, that you would give them a, 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 a zeal, Lord God, and a burning, a burning zeal to go out and to continue this work, Lord God. It doesn't have to end because we left. So, Father, I just pray, Lord, a hedge of protection over that place, over every soul, whether they came and listened or if they were not even near. I just pray that that word would go forth, Lord God, and that you would do a mighty work. And we pray for souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we enjoyed the fellowship going all the way out to the prison. It was still kind of early. I was trying to process the early morning ride. But I wanted to stay in a place spiritually. <clears throat> because I didn't want to do any generic ministry. Well, you already know what generic means. <laughs> A cheaper version of something. So we went there, and I'm going to say this, when we went through there, I was kind of surprised. It was more of a minimum security type situation right there. Because I've been, I did prison ministry when I was in Texas. And I promise you, we went through a lot more scrutiny going through the doors than they did. And it was kind of lax. Matter of fact, it was kind of a funny story that I told us to Brenda. There was... They had a female um, guard, right? I said, look like she can fight. <laughs> look, look, look like she can hold her own with all those men. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, if I can't win the fight, I'm gonna win the race. She got to catch me. <laughs> I said, uh, 
and, and she looked like she knew. She looked like she she was in depth from that. So, but we 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 went in there. There was two teams. They had uh, they had two teams, and they broke us up. And initially, they had broke up. I mean, they put Aaron and um, Brandon on, on in one team, and then they had Pastor Matt, Callie, and myself in a, in another team. And then they ended up breaking me up again and put me with two guys from another church, which which was okay, because I knew we would navigate. And we worked together. Now, when we walked in the dormitory that we were, that we was going in, the first one, you could feel seriously the hopelessness yep. that was in there. You didn't have to fake that, you knew it. You could feel the spirit, the tension, the spirit when you walked in the room. And basically what had happened initially, it, it took a while for people to kind of open up to, to anybody coming in there. I believe because it was Saturday, I guess a lot of people, it was, it was a Saturday, right? Yes. Yeah. A lot of people were slow getting up and you had to be very careful about disturbing people. So there was people going backwards and forward to the, to the latrine, the bathroom and everything. And I finally got a hold of somebody. Now, I'm going to be careful about names and everything because, you know, we understand we don't want to put anybody's name out there. But I took the time to talk with him, and he, and he poured out his heart to me because he had family on the outside that he was concerned about. Now, he was going to be being released in a short period of time, within a few months or so. And he was talking about what he wanted to do going back out. He wanted to go back out and start hustling. I told him that's not a good idea. <laughs> That's right. Because that's what got you here in the first place. That's right. You know, because he was under the under the, um, the mindset that he couldn't do anything else other than what he had been doing. And I told him, I said, if you if you got a mind to do drugs, sell drugs, you might as well you got the mindset to go into business, supply and demand, a whole bunch of other stuff. I tried to, to get him in the mindset of using that mind that he was using for evil. Yes. For something far better. And we didn't end him back, back in jail. So, started praying with him. I asked him if he had any pains in his body. He had pain in his neck, his back, and his foot. Took the time to pray with him, the power of God fell right there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Power of God fell, everything was healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now that was the start of it. Yes. So then I had his undivided attention. Because you know, people kind of look you over to make sure you're genuine and stuff. Now the funny thing about it was as I was praying, found out after the conversation that his mother was in church and she spoke in tongues. Wow. Praise God. Now this was the thing. I was speaking in tongues and I prayed over him. He started speaking in tongues right now. Now, now listen. I said, you speak in tongues? He said, no, it's just imitating you. Uh, I said, no, you don't, you don't do that. <laughs> I had to correct him on that. But I had his undivided attention for, for I don't know how long, because there was lots of people that walked backwards and forward, you know, and, and, and then there was a few that was just afraid to come, come our way. But I had his undivided attention, and I did everything in my power to encourage him that once he left out of there, that he doesn't have to come back here. Because sometimes when you administer, you have to minister on all fronts. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that when they go out, that they have more than just a jailhouse conversion. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they, they go to jail, they find the Lord, then they lose them once they, once they go out the prison gates. So I wanted to make sure that he understood that this is a lifetime decision. Now, when we prayed, I said, look, we're going to pray that God do something for you, but this is on the condition that you do not go back. When I say go back, I'm talking about do not leave the Lord. Do not, do not backslide. Do not do all these other things. Because some people just want to be free. Yes. So we're very careful about making promises yep. that we cannot keep because they want you. They want you to, to promise them stuff. But we made sure that we did everything that was possible. So that was the first one. The second one happened because he had to leave and go do some other stuff. The second one. First, he didn't want to say anything to me. Then I took the time to just talk with him, and the Holy Ghost just touched him. And he sat there. We talked. He started crying. 
And he just started melting under, under the presence of God. Hallelujah. And I gave him my word that once we left out of there, we was going to be praying for him. Because, you know, a lot of times we say we're going to pray, sometimes people don't pray. I gave him my word that we would come and pray. Now, if this is being recorded, I'm not going to mention names across here. Those of you that would, that, you know, we can do this off camera. I want you to keep him in prayer. Amen. I want the church family here to cover him in prayer. Amen. Along with everybody else. Because that gave him an assurance that somebody loved him. Yes. 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 That's right. Oh, my God. That was the first two. Then we went out into the yard because then after a while, they, the, the gentleman that was that was ahead of us, that was in charge of us, he came and got us. And we went out into the yard. Hallelujah. And I was just trying to navigate. This is the thing I did. There was so much stuff that had happened on the yard. Many of the people that we prayed with, they felt the presence of God. And I'm going to give Pastor Bat some kudos. He really cut up. He cut up with that word. I saw Brennan over here ministering to somebody. Aaron was ministering to somebody. Kelly was ministering to somebody. It was really a blessing. Everybody was, seemed like they was at home with what they was doing. And we had the people's attention. Yeah. Yeah. Those men, we had their attention. Hallelujah. I believe they could feel the sincerity yeah. oh, yeah. of what was happening. Because even though in that, in that, in that particular prison, a lot of them were, were Expecting at some point, whether it's in a few months, weeks, or years to be released, there was still a sense of hopelessness. What we saw there was men that was broken under the presence of God. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's important because when you go in a place, sometimes we give people hope. But when the presence of God comes and intervenes, yes. and they feel the presence of God in a tangible way. Yes. Because there's people we pray for, we knew the Holy Ghost hit them. Yes. They felt the fire of the Holy Ghost touch them. Yes. And they knew that there was a God right there in the cross. Oh Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, my Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. As we pray for many of them, now these, these are hard, these, these are hardcore core individuals. They was crying in the presence yes. of God. Hallelujah. I want you to think about that. Grown tough men trying to be hard. Yes. The Holy Ghost just melted. Hallelujah. Woo! Yeah. Oh, God. And then Pastor Mary, he, he cut up. And I already told you, I think I may have said something to me, but I'll say they had um the man that was on the keyboard. He could play. Yes. He could play. Man, I mean, I'm learning how to play keyboard. I'm looking at that, so I need some of that. I said, that, that's, that's a, he, he, he's well above my pay grade. But, but he was anointed in the presence of God's fell. And he had spoke a word that God, now I'm not sure if he knew in advance that you was going to be preaching. He did, no. I don't think he did. But he said the Lord told him that Pastor Matt had a word. Amen. He didn't know that Pastor Matt was already on, on, on the program to a minister. And Pastor Matt cut, cut up Everybody there was convicted. Yes, thank you. Even the ones that should have been being volunteers had been, they was touched too. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I will tell you, he's the same way here. Yeah. <laughs> but those of you that have a problem with it, he was there and they ate it up. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So after he prayed, and after, after he administered the word, he called it off the call. Yeah. Yeah, that's and that's when the real fun began. Hallelujah. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. A whole bunch of stuff started happening. Now, I missed the baptism. There was about six people that got baptized. Hallelujah. Six people that got baptized. Now, there's a story behind that. Um, but I will tell you this. Always before you baptize someone, make sure that they're truly saved. Yes. That's right. Because there was one in particular at the, I mean, when we was praying for him at the end, he had already, he had already been water baptized in that particular segment. So when I asked him what he needed prayer for, he said he needed, he wanted to be born again. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> All right, so we took care of that. So so again, there, there was at least one person that was like that, and there may have been another person that wasn't sure about their salvation 
You don't ever baptize people That's unless right. you know for sure Amen. that they're truly born again. But I took the time to lead them into the prayer of repentance. Then I prayed over them. I felt, we felt such a surge. You know what to do is one guy hit the power of God, hit him. He just, he really just, Holy Ghost was just all over him. Amen. Now, why is this important to me? Because people, the people have this, this misconception that God's not real. And I know we can't always deal with everything based upon feelings. I get that. But when people can feel the heat and tangible presence of God, yes. they know that God loves 